Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 3, Stoichiometry. The relative atomic mass of an element is a number you find on the periodic table right next to the element's name and atomic number. The relative atomic mass is the average mass of the isotopes of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of 12 carbon. The fixed mass of a carbon-12 atom is like a standard reference point for comparing the masses of all other atoms. The relative molecular mass is the sum of the relative atomic masses. The term relative formula mass is used when referring to the total mass of an ionic compound. So, to calculate the relative molecular mass of a substance, you have to add up the relative atomic masses of all the atoms present in the formula. Let's learn to calculate reacting masses in simple proportions. Calculations will not involve the mole concept. So, in a reaction, when you add up the total relative molecular masses of reactants, it must be equal to the total relative molecular masses of the products. Let's test this. So, first, you must write the balanced equation. For the relative atomic mass of each element, just take it from the periodic table. Now, let's calculate the reacting masses. For magnesium, it's 2 times 24, which is 48. And for oxygen, since there are two atoms in O2, it's 2 times 16, which is 32. This gives a total reacting mass of 80 grams. For magnesium oxide, MgO, the mass of 2 MgO is 2 times 24 plus 2 times 16, which equals 80. The 2 in MgO belongs to both Mg and O. Therefore, the reacting masses in this reaction equals a total mass of 80 grams and the total mass of the product is also 80 grams. Let's do another example. First, write the balanced equation and the relative atomic mass of each element. Add up all the total relative masses of the reactants first and then of the products, making sure to multiply each of them by their respective coefficients. What I want to highlight in this example is the nitrate inside the brackets. There are two nitrogen atoms in NO3 twice, but there are six oxygen atoms. This is because there are three oxygen atoms and you multiply it by the two that is outside the brackets. Next, the mole and the Avogadro constant. Concentration is how much of something is mixed in a liquid. It helps us understand how strong or diluted a solution is. Concentration can be measured in grams per dm cubed or mole per dm cubed. The mole is the unit of amount of substance. It's a unit used to count atoms, molecules or particles. One mole contains 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 particles. Those particles can be atoms or ions or molecules. This number is the Avogadro constant. 
So, for example, 1 mole of carbon contains 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of carbon or even 1 mole of carbon dioxide or CO2 also will contain 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of carbon dioxide. So, 1 mole of any substance contains the Avogadro constant. Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of different gases contain the same number of molecules. This applies when the temperature and pressure stay the same. In simpler terms, it means that if you have say three containers of gas at the same temperature and pressure and they have the same volume, they will contain the same number of gas molecules regardless of the type of gas. So Avogadro's law helps calculate gas volumes in reactions. At standard room temperature and pressure or RTP, the space taken up by one mole of any gas measures 24 decimeters cubed or 24,000 cubic centimeters. This is known as the molar gas volume at RTP. The standard room conditions are room temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and pressure of 1 atm. So when you want to calculate either the volume of a gas or the number of moles of a gas, you would use this formula. Volume of gas in decimeters cubed is equal to the number of moles of gas multiplied by the molar gas volume that is 24 dm cubed. Alternatively, if we want to find the volume of a gas in cubic centimeters or if the molar gas volume has been given in cubic centimeters, then we use this formula. Volume of gas in cubic centimeters equals to the number of moles of gas multiplied by the molar gas volume of 24,000 cubic centimeters. Let's go through an example. Given that there are two moles of oxygen gas, how can you determine the volume of this oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure? So this is pretty straightforward. We use the volume of gas formula. So there are two moles of oxygen gas. So we substitute it in the formula and find the volume that is 48 dm cubed. In the next example, we have been asked to find the volume in cubic centimeters. So we use the formula volume of gas equals to number of moles of gas multiplied by the molar gas volume of 24,000 cubic centimeters. So, 4.6 multiplied by 24,000 gives us 110,400 cubic centimeters or cm cubed. How do we find the number of moles of a gas if the volume of gas is given? We simply rearrange the volume of gas formula and make number of moles the subject of the formula. We divide both sides by 24. The 24s on the right get cancelled out and the number of moles of gas is now the subject of the formula. So the formula will be number of moles of gas equals to volume of gas divided by 24. Let's take an example. If a gas occupies a volume of 672 dm cubed at standard RTP, how many moles of the gas are present? We apply the volume to the formula dividing 672 by 24 which gives us 28 moles. In the next example, since the volume has been given in cubic centimeters, we use the formula number of moles of gas equals to volume of gas divided by 24,000. 
3000 divided by 24000 gives us 0 0.125 moles. That concludes part 3 of topic 3 stoichiometry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye.